Hello everyone, I am Erika of BeadingSchool.com and you are watching Coffee Time with Erika, my weekly BD broadcast. Today I would like to talk to you about brooches, because what if you have only one motive? Before I would start, please let me know if you can hear me, if you can see me. I would like to make sure that the technical stuff is all right. Are you watching from Facebook? Are you watching from uh, YouTube? Please let me know. Facebook user friend is saying good morning. Good morning indeed. Claudia is here and Sarah and Sherry and Corinne is here and Irina is here and Lutka and Kata. Hello, everyone. I hope you all had a beautiful weekend celebrating Easter or celebrating Passover or just enjoying the, well, in the West, Western Hemisphere, the springtime approaching. And I hope you feel recharged and full of creative ideas. I also see... Facebook user friend is saying that she can hear me and see me on Facebook. Wonderful. Ariana is here and Linda and Debbie and Gisela. Other Debbie. Rachel is here. Rachel hears me and sees me well on YouTube. Katya, Tanya, Reni, Vex, Marike, Connie, Claire, Samia, Lita, Katerina. And Robin also. And ladies, if you haven't heard your name, then it means that I don't see your name and I don't see your profile. Hi, Asaria. And uh, that's because at the same time, you can watch to this, today's video in real time from the Beading School Facebook channel, from the Beading School Facebook club, and also from YouTube and I'm using a special program to make it possible also to make it possible to show you pictures for example and if you are watching from the club then you need to give special permission to my program so it can see your name it can see your profile the club the beating school club on Facebook is a safe space no one can see what's inside not even my program unless you give it permission if you want to it helps me to address you directly it helps me to answer your questions but it's not absolutely necessary if you don't feel like it. I also see Jennifer and other Facebook user friends. Claudia says the video on YouTube keeps freezing. I'm sorry about that. Unfortunately, I can't help with that at the moment. And Ginny is here, big lover of brooches with a beautiful collection of vintage ones. Joyce and Constance too. So first of all, I would like to also mention that I would like to thank you all for playing along with us with our butterfly chasing game. There were some butterflies flying into the beading school bead shop that you could find during the weekend and the lucky beaders who found them they will find the butterflies in their next package i would also like to thank everyone who placed an order as i said last week everyone to thank you for all the creative springtime energy and your uh, and your company and your beautiful jewels Everyone who placed an order between last week's and this week's coffee time uh, will receive a little gift. And as there were so many of you, and I am so, so, so grateful and thank you so much, then uh, some of you will actually, we did not have enough at the end from the forget me not cabochons. So some of you will receive together with your chocolate eggs, some lotus flower cabochons. So still in flowery mood, but a different kind of sparkly uh, cabochon to play with. So I hope that you will love it just as much as the forget me not. 
And thank you again. I also see now Louise and Gunnel and Niti and uh, Yosin is here also. Thank you so much. And Ginny says, I joined the BD club in Omaha and took my brooches for a show and tell. I hope some of the ladies check out beading school because they love them. They even put your name in the notes from the club. Thank you so much, Ginny. I really, really appreciate it when you ladies spread the word about beading school because it's super important for us to keep coming back and keep bringing you uh, creative things to play with and creative ideas. And Susan is here also and with Marie on the bus. So lately we talked a lot about going big with our beadwork and arranging beaded components in different ways. We looked at examples of turning motifs into statement necklaces, for example. We were joining elements into bracelet, adding this, adding that. As last week's question about drops proved it, most of us are like, Really, nearly every one of us are drop girls. So we love adding blingy little things to our components. But today, let's try to find an answer or several answers actually to a question that hasn't been here before. So what if all we have is one beaded motif? Either because we don't have more beads or we do have beads, but we don't have more time. We are just a bit lazy or maybe we need a cute, fast gift for a loved one. So my favorite answer to the question of what can we do if we have only one beaded motive is bead a brooch and bead lots of them. So with the springtime that we are enjoying nowadays in most of the countries of our beaders who come together for coffee time with Eric and no one has to be alone, the weather still asks for a jacket or coat. Long sleeves cover our arms and bracelets, but they give us another opportunity to wear brooches. So let's embrace brooches today together and the vintage vibe that they help to achieve. Today, I will share with you my favorite tips and tricks, and I will also publish a little video separately, uh, showing you three ways how I am attaching beaded motifs to suitable brooch bases to help you with that. So let's get started, and I hope that you are excited about brooches. Uh, while I check the comments to see if there is a question, and if I accidentally miss something, then please post your question or post your note again, because it does happen that I don't catch everything. Uh, so I will quickly check your comments, but also in the meanwhile, please tell me if you have ever beaded a brooch so Donna says that Facebook is also freezing. I'm, I'm really sorry about that. And Lutka says in the meanwhile, I love brooches. They are the best. And Lutka indeed made in the past already many, many, many beautiful brooches. Proof of it in the Weeding School Club. Lita says that she has made brooches in the past, but she hates the modern pin bags. Yes, there are different kinds and not all of them are to everyone's liking. Molly joined us in the meanwhile. Hi, Molly. And Marika says, I have never made a brooch. Maybe it is time to think about it. So Facebook user friend. And 
Claire says, I'm reading my first brooches now. I'm enjoying it so much that I think it might be my new thing. Claire, that's wonderful to hear. And Samia says, I have never made a brooch. I'm thinking about making one someday. And Rachel also says, I have never beaded a brooch. And I was really excited for today's talk. Then let's look into it and let's get started. Uh, I have collected some of the usual questions. We were working with brooches in the past. Uh, so uh, I have a bit of experience already, luckily, that what you readers are usually curious about when talking about brooches. So I collected several questions that uh, you asked in the uh, past. And then when we go over them and I haven't answered your question, then please ask me at the end. And also, uh, in the meanwhile, when something on topic comes to your mind, then please post your note, post your thought in a comment. And that will be super helpful to share or be divised on with each other. And Ginny agrees in the meanwhile about the pin bags. There are basic ones. Yeah, I, I have to say that I have like several types only and they are, they are fine. I like them, I'm happy, but yeah, they are not made in the EU mostly. Uh, the reason is actually that they are uh, time consuming to make. So manufacturers whom we asked in the Czech Republic, for example, they don't, they don't make brooch bases anymore. Even if they make brooches, then they, uh, then they order the pins from abroad. And Niti says, I have made brooches, but don't use them much. Kata says, I'm not using brooches, but I beat it some. For Natasha, they are her latest favorites. She used to love pendants, but now it's brooches, brooches. And Cheryl has a good thought. When I make a brooch with pin back, I stitch a peyote tube to slide over the pin. I have a loop of beads on it so I can make it a necklace as well. And Sarah has made one brooch so far. And Niti says she loves the brooch filigrees in the bead shop. It's the easiest way to stabilize a floppy motif too. I like your thinking, Niti. So let's look into the questions that I have collected. First of all, what do I need to make a brooch. And I will be sharing now also my hand camera because I will be showing you components that you need. I will also be showing you some jewels as examples. So please let me know if you can still hear me well and if there is no echo because when I switch to my hand camera, then there is always a risk that something is not working out well. Claire says, in the meanwhile, I have a lovely brooch that Niti made. It will be coming to the GBVS next month. And that's so sweet. And Renee would love to make brooches. So hopefully the voice is fine. Okay, Jimmy says that it's good. So thank you so much. So what do I need to make a brooch? And first, of course, you need some type of pin, possibly in combination with other components. There are different kinds of pins available, and I will show you now some. This is possibly my favorite. It is a simpler pin base with two holes that can be used to attach 
it to something. It has a safety mechanism to make sure that it does not open. However, the best part about this is that it's not only a pin, but it's also a pendant holder in one. This is actually a super high quality one. So make sure to look for it in the beading school bead shop. And another from the simpler types is this one. It has a smaller pin, also with a safety mechanism, but a simpler uh, one, like this, uh, this uh, half uh, loop kind of. And in this case, you can glue this motif on the back of your brooch or on the back of your filigree. I will mention that possibility a little bit later. And then there are also some fancy brooch bases available. So there are this historic, uh, not this uh, filigree brooch bases that, uh, and that uh, Niti mentioned. So these ones consist of a pretty part, a filigree, and then a pin bag that is already attached to it. These are coming in different shapes, different sizes, different colors. So there is a wide variety. And you can also, these are actually my favorites, for making brooches, but you can also make your own pin back. So it can happen that you like a different kind of filigree, for example, a historic filigree that we have in the bead shop and it does not have the brooch base. However, you can also turn that into a brooch base in different ways. You can, for example, combine your brooch with bead embroidery, so the whole motif can be sewn on a filigree and on ultra suede, and then you can insert a simpler pin back on the back of your bead embroidery, partially hiding it. That's the best what you can do to make it look professional. So the pin back that I have used here is actually identical to this one. However, I cut holes in the ultra suede backing and then only the important functional parts are visible and not this middle part of the brooch. You can also glue something on the back of this, either a simple one or even a bigger brooch base to turn it into a brooch component. So there are different possibilities for you. And then another question, how to make like something what I hear over and over again, that it's actually hard to decide sometimes that if you would like to make a brooch, because then it feels very limiting that what you can do for it. However, on one hand, thanks to this component, it is possible to use it in multiple ways. So for example, this one can hang on your neck as a pendant, but also can be attached to your coat. However, even if you have only a simple brooch, then you can think about it in a creative way. You can pin it not only on your coat, but you can also pin it on your bag, you can pin it on your hat, on your, I have actually, actually little brooches from fabric, which I like to pin on my socks when I'm wearing like higher socks. And uh, what I would like to show you also that here 
I pinned my brooch into a bow tie so I can add or remove it into the bow tie and I can wear it with a white blouse, for example. So even if you have a brooch, it doesn't have to limit you to wear it only on your coat. And thank you. <laughs> So Sherry says also, I really like the idea of pinning it to your bag. And Claire loves the bow tie, bow tie idea. The bow tie, I have it from a vintage shop, from a second hand shop. And I wanted to make it, I actually was searching for something simple so then I can bring it up with some beadwork later. And Susan also says you can pin them to hats too. So it's actually not only one jewel if you end up making a, making a brooch. So if we battled through the decision, if we want or don't want to make a brooch, then the next question log logically is how to attach it to the filigree. So there are three ways that I like to use on how, how you can attach it or how you uh, attach it not only to, to filigree but different brooch bases. And one of them is in combination with bead embroidery that I showed you already. And actually there is a video on our YouTube channel explaining to you how to bead embroider the tribute ring. And there you can see how I cut the backing. When do I cut it? How do I insert it? The, uh, insert it the ring base. And you can do the same with the brooch bases. And if you don't want to add fabric, then you can either sew the beaded motif on your on your uh, filigree, or you can glue it. And you don't have to be afraid of gluing. The secret of it is, on one hand, using good quality glue. It doesn't have to be an expensive one. I am using glue which I picked up in the hardware store around the corner. What is important that it needs to work with metal and with glass. So for example, this one is also a brooch which I fixed by gluing. So there are these four kite cabochons in metal close settings in the middle. And I just applied a generous amount of glue on the back and pushed the filigree base into it. I pushed here a bit too much, so it's a it's it's visible. However, you can be more careful than I was that time. You can also do it with smaller beads, the gluing. You don't have to have big beads. So for example, this crooks motif, it was also glued on the filigree base. What you need to be careful about is that don't put too much glue on it because when you push down the beaded motif into the glue, then if you have too much, then it might come through in between the beads. And Lita says, I'm always reluctant to glue. It's so permanent. And that is indeed true that you need to be a hundred percent sure about it and you need to be careful. And when it is drying, then I advise to lay it flat, maybe prop it up with something under it because if it slides, then it might dry in not the best place. Cindy likes to make put the put the brooches actually to her hair too. And that's a great idea. But what if you want to sew the beaded motif into your filigree? And for this, I actually prepared two little drawings for you. So you can imagine it better. And then afterwards, I will publish the video on YouTube. 
So in this case, uh, I am ex uh, what I need to do first, actually, that I have a filigree. Let me show this. Uh, I have a filigree. I have a beaded motif. First of all, of course, I need to find a fitting filigree that is like good in size, the style fits. And then I try to find where the beads are in alignment with some small details of the filigree. So for example, I have this one here and I see that I could attach it by attaching this delicate bead to this part and then also the one opposite of it at the bottom to this part. So you always first need to like focus on the placement and find that where does the, the beaded motif goes on the filigree. And once you have it, then I, I have two favorite stitches, how I am attaching it. So in this case, I'm exiting the bead, beading around that metal part, and then beading through the bead from the same direction again. And I repeat it two, three times. And uh, that's how I keep it, keep it steady. And the other way, how I am attaching uh, attaching uh, beaded motifs to the filigree is this one. I like using it when I have to attach a group of beads, not only one. And in this case, I bead, so for example, the two beads that I want to attach, I bead around the filigree, up, uh, down and up again. I bead back, in this case, through the two beads, and then I do the same. I go down through the filigree, I come up at the uh, at a neighboring hole, and then I bead again through the beads that I am attaching. And again, I repeat this two, three times. And... I was just filming this one for you. This is a motif designed by Nitti. And uh, in this case, I actually combined the three ways of attaching the beaded motif to the, uh, to the filigree, because here I used the way when I am like beading also back through the beads and here at the top I was using this circular way of like beading through the bead going down coming up and beading through the bead that I am attaching in the same direction again and here at the bottom I just glued it on because the motif is hanging a bit under the filigree so I could not find a good placement for a stitch. So here I just added some glue. And some thoughts about these. Brit Marie says, I never used glue. I sewed the motif to the filigree. And Ariana too, I sew it on a filigree, the pin too, or sew it on an embroidery base. And Ginny says, I like to glue a tiny bit to hold it in place and then secure with fire line or fire. It's hard to keep it in place otherwise. And I like Ginny's idea a lot. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. So a filigree it doesn't have only this function that yeah yeah now i can i can uh, use the motive as a pin as a brooch but it can also really add to the style of your jewel it sometimes takes a little bit of time to find the right fit but it's really really worth it what you can do that you can also just add your motif in the middle and leave more of the filigree visible. So it really has 
an important decorative function. You can also cover most of the filigree with the beaded motif and just leave a little bit around, around the beaded motif to complement it. Or as I did with these two, you can Partially, these are actually asymmetrical, or like they are symmetrical, but not in a concentric way. So here, the beaded motif is partially hanging over the filigree. I also had in the past this uh, this uh, butterfly-shaped uh, brooch base. And in this case, I did not want to cover the butterfly at all. So the beaded motif, this is the Sarah beaded motif. It is hanging completely under the filigree. And Angelica is here. Welcome, Angelica. And Bex says, I usually wrap my brooch back in ultra sweet and stitch that in place, then stitch the ultra sweet to my beadwork. I love the ideas coming. Niti says, I feel I am not using the filigree properly if I cover most of it. I think, uh, uh, Niti, you don't have to, if you like the piece, then you don't have to have bad conscience about covering the filigree. Sometimes I think that tiny, tiny bit is all that you need. Or sometimes you need it more for its function to keep the motif sturdy. So just measure it by your feelings, dear Niti, that do you like it? Do you enjoy wearing it or not? Thank you, Angelica and everyone. Yosin loves it when the filigree is more visible. And Rachel has a really good question. Is it possible to sew the beaded motif straight onto the brooch pin without a filigree under it? And yes, it is possible. However, on one hand, I think it's harder to find like good placement for the pin because of the placement of the of the holes that can't be changed. And I have a feeling also that it's easier to make it look cheap if the pin is sewn directly to the beaded motif. At least that was my case when I was trying to do that. But it's always worth to experiment, of course, and someone else might have a different, different opinion than me. And Shelly is here, also, and Vania is here. And Vania is asking, can you show the bow tie once again, please? And will you have a picture of all the examples? Uh, Vanya, if you would like to watch again the examples, then you can click through the video. That is the best that you can do. Or you can visit the Beading School website and then type in brooches. What I am working on, uh, by the way, also, it uh, that I am also putting together an article about the ideas, but it will take a day or two until it's published, proper, uh, probably. And I wanted to see the bow tie, so here it is for you. And in this case, also the brooch base is actually on top of the beaded motif. The beaded motif is like hanging under it. So another possibility. And Niti also said, it's some, uh, the pin does not look professionally finished if I sew directly to the pin. It sometimes does not look professionally finished if sewed directly to the pin. And that was my experience too. And yeah, what you could also see in the meanwhile that using a filigree and making a brooch does not mean that you have to say goodbye to your beloved drops and connectors. So even if 
you are uh, making a brooch, but you love adding drops and all kinds of funny things to personalize uh, your jewels, then uh, it is absolutely possible. You can either attach the drop to your beaded motif before you would finish it off and secure your, and trim your thread, but also you can either, if the drops loop is phased, let's say in the wrong way, then you can attach the drop to the filigree with a jump ring, or sometimes the loop of the drop can be opened and attached to the filigree directly. And this one is not finished yet, but uh, I still need to attach the brooch base. And I want to make it into a, an unusually big brooch. But as you can see here, I actually added not one, but two crystal connectors and a pendant drop, a big one. So making a brooch does not limit your create, does not have to limit your, your creativity. And one more important question that I wanted to address, that where should you place the brooch base? So if it is a heavier, bigger motif, then the brooch base should be placed towards the top, not exactly in the middle. Imagine if I had the brooch base here a bit lower, then probably the heart would buckle towards the front and it would not stay flat on my jacket. So even when I look at brooch bases, then the bigger ones, the filigree brooch bases, then the uh, with the bigger ones, the pin is towards the top. It's not here in the center, but it is towards the top. And yeah, you might notice that actually uh, this last brooch base that I am holding at the moment, it is a new one. It is something that you have probably, that you probably haven't seen yet. So after a pretty long waiting time for the filigree brooch bases, I actually have not only one brooch base for you, but a whole filigree brooch box. And I would like to show you what's inside. In the meanwhile, just one more thing to mention that if you are decorating, if you are, uh, if you would like to, uh, if you would like to personalize your components even more, then the drops and connectors are not your only options. As you can see, I have even glued flatback rhinestones, preciosa rhinestones, uh, to the filigree brooch bases. This one here is a seven millimeter one, a chaton rose from preciosa. And these ones come from smaller Suwon uh, rhinestones, and I removed them from the metal settings uh, using a, an office knife to give more focus on the butterfly, even if the beaded motif is the most important one. And Yoshin already loves the box. And I'm super happy to hear that. And let's see what's inside. All this box, it is focusing on filigree brooch bases. It is a new collection that we have received recently. And thanks to the, uh, the Dangerous Fu uh, Fuchsia box, we are bringing this to you in a super good value edition, but most importantly, full of creative possibilities. It's not packed perfectly because I already I am guilty of already <laughs> looking into it. So let's see. Let's see what's inside. 
So on the top, I can already see my favorite one. This is called the Hidden Hearts uh, brooch base. It is in bronze color, but please note that some shapes may vary in your box and they can come in bronze, they can come in gold. So there, are, there is a mix of colors in the brooch box. So this one we call Hidden Heart because it has these heart shapes on the edge. And since there are so many openings on this brooch base, then it's super easy to find where you can attach your beaded motif. If you ask Zuzi, she will say that she uh, this is her favorite one probably. She attached, for example, the Chloe motif into it and many, many, many more. And then another one. This is called the Four Hearts. We are on the topic of hearts. So you can see there are one, two, three, four hearts hidden in the, in the filigree. This one looks a little bit different because it has this bigger pin. So it, it has a different visual effect. And I have used this kind of filigree uh, without this pin for the codex motif. Then the next one also has this pin. It's called the ring flower. And this is a smaller one, suitable for smaller motif. And Margareta is asking for the pin on the first round filigree. In this case, it is in the middle. So I recommend to use it with lighter motifs to keep, keep it nice and flat on your jacket. Not super heavy one. Angelica says she likes the butterfly bases. Unfortunately, I don't have those. Then I have a rectangular one, actually, with four circular bases, four circular motifs next to each other. And I already have an idea for this. You might remember that when we were beading during no one has to bead along this motif, then I already had two and I was beading a third one during our, work, our workshop. And this one I would like to finish with this brooch base. And Vanya has a question. For the thicker pins, which may only be good for open woven fabric, any recommendations for the thicker ones? I love the way they look. Uh, yes, these two are indeed thicker. You have a good eye, Vanya. And these ones I like to wear with indeed a woven jacket like this one that I have on, uh, on myself. The other ones are a lot thinner, but this type with the extra pin it is thicker, so then you need to be careful uh, that which type of clothing do you wear it on. Then I have this one. This is actually shaped like a, an Easter egg. After Easter, I think my mind is <laughs> still fixed on <laughs> some traditions. It's two times three centimeter big. And this is a really cute one. I think it's it might be good for like beginner brooch, brooch, be, brooch beaders that it's not so big, not heavy at all. So it might be nice to start with a smaller one like this. 
Then I have here one called the small square. And this is also a smaller motif for beginner brooches. But a super cute one. Irene is waiting for the brooches, brooch box on the side. And uh, I actually have my colleague Edina here today, and she should be publishing the brooches now. Edina, are you here with me? Or Andri, Andy, are you here with me? It's always the best to go, by the way, to the new in the beat shop category. And then this one is actually the same, the next one that I used for the Nitti motif. And Margaret is asking, why are the pins always at the middle? With the bigger ones, they are not. So for example, with this big one, the pin is at the top. So then it hangs nicely on your coat. Kata says the brooches are loading. Thank you for checking on it, Kata. And then I have here another circular one with the pin on the top. As this is, this is called dot, dot, dot. And dot, 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 because there are three circles here and thanks to the many little details it is also a nice one to use with your beaded motifs it's easy to find alignments then i have here the ribbon brooch the bow tie one that i used for for my linda motif and this actually will be available in different colors. So not only bronze, but also gold and even rose gold color will be available. Then I have here some more golden ones, but please note that this might vary that what exactly is in your box and the number of the brooches is the same always, but it might vary a little bit. And sometimes you might get something in bronze or you might get it in gold. So this one is also a smaller one. This is how it looks like. I have another one. Wow, it's still like there are still so many in the box. I have this one here and I actually used it several times in the past. This is a good one for small motifs too. It can also come in golden color. Then I also have this little square one in golden color. And actually, I think this is Edina. And she's saying, hi, I am restocking the beauties for you. So she's actually referring to also older shapes that she's adding again, that were available in the past and might become available now again. And also she's restocking some of the historic filigrees, not only the brooch bases, but also some historic filigrees. So this is... This is the bronze variety of this one that I used with this motif. I have to admit that when I first got an asymmetrical brooch base, like this one that I used last year, then I was a bit afraid of it, that how will I use it? But I actually ended up loving this style. 
I also have the dot 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 in a golden version. And then there are two more in the box. It's called Ice Flower. Doesn't it remind you of the ice flowers on the windows that it's called? And it is available in gold and in bronze too. This is how the back looks like. And you can attach your motif either in the smaller circle, uh, leaving most of the brooch visible, or you can attach it here and here and here on the outer edge of your motif. So you have choices with this. And one of our readers here, unfortunately, I don't recall who was that. But someone was mentioning barrettes and hair pieces, and together with the new uh, with the new brooch box, we are also publishing now hair accessories with filigree bases. Because again, what do we do if we have only one motif? We can make the brooch, but we can also make a nice decoration for or for our hair. So there will be different hair ornaments. This is for like ladies with a bigger ponytail. And then we will also have smaller ones available. This one also comes in rose gold. Ariane says it's awesome, <laughs> and Claudia is loving them. I'm super happy about it, ladies. I actually have a box full of pieces here next to me that the lady sent to me to play with. So I also found a bronze variety. The hair ornaments, they will come in bundles. So, uh, so you can also have them all for a bit better price. And Vanilla likes the hairpiece. It was funny asking, I think. Ginny also says it's super cute. So, ladies, I hope you liked this a lot. I'm really happy that we have the filigree brooch bases available again because. We didn't have many of those during the past past year. They were scarce. So I'm really looking forward to see your beautiful places and wishing you lots of fun playing with them. I will uh, publish now after saying goodbye to you. Uh, I will publish now the video also that you can watch on YouTube, uh, me showing you how you sew the, uh, the beaded motif into the filigree bases. And then Rachel says that she can't see the box yet, and I will look into it and post the links also. Oh, your says I have short hair. Is there maybe someone so you can make a gift to someone if you like this? So, just one more. Thank you so much for your enthusiasm and for, uh, for your company today. I would also like to thank everyone who decides to place an order and get some of the brooch boxes, some of the filigrees, some of the hair or brooch accessories. And I would love to invite you also to bead Ruxandra's new Fontaine of Majorelle motif on Friday. This time it will be an offline, no one has to be alone. Uh, 
it means that we will publish uh, we will publish the tutorial at the usual time and you ladies can be together in a way that you can post your work in progress pictures you can take pictures of your um, beads that you are preparing for this so you can be together in the beading school club but there won't be a live video this friday so with much love we are bringing you a new tutorial from luxandra so ladies thank you so much and if you don't have any more questions then I would like to thank you again and wish you a nice creative uh, rest of the day. Bye-bye, everyone.